president who we've had on the show before, but gosh, we have so many things to ask him today because he just announced last Monday that uh, he has sold a hefty portion of his company. And I think the number was you valued it at three hundred million dollars or something in that ballpark. Uh, it's the Canadian company, pronounce that name for me. Is it Behringer? Behringer. Yeah, Behringer. Okay. That's what I thought it was. OK. Yep. And so you can see he's in his posh office right now with the gold fixtures everywhere. So uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, so uh, the thing that intrigued me in your announcement, you said we're just in the second inning. So that's the part that I want to bore into. You know, what is coming next, Jason? Well, so I think every I mean, this is a Jeff Bezos line, but a day one approach every day. You start new and you say, hey, what you did yesterday may not be what you're going to do today. Um, this transaction is obviously rewarding for all the investors, many, most team members, myself. And when I say inning two, chapter two, there's a lot of things that we don't do that we believe we should do. Go deeper in verticals, like with data and software. We have this thing called Benzinga Pro, which is pretty good. We think it can be way better. Um, there's stuff with our events that we think be way better. We think we can do a much better job of helping, uh, smaller companies reach the public investors. I mean, we all know about Facebook, Google's of the world, but you don't know about that upstart. You don't know if it's high quality or not. So can we do a better job to get the word out about those kind of companies? Those are things that, um, you know, are in our pipeline and then improving product, improving experience, helping people make decisions with better data and information. Matthew. All right. So uh, tell us a little bit about how this transaction uh, got started. How did you hear about them? How did they hear about you? I'm always interested in stuff like that when it comes to uh, merger and acquisition activity. How did it get started? Well, and so good question. In fact, it didn't start with them. We had, um, about two years ago, we received an unsolicited offer on the company and I didn't think the time was right. And then about 10 months ago, we received another unsolicited offer. This one was a lot more serious, a lot higher numbers, and they own some properties in our space. And we looked at it, we considered it. Before doing anything, we hired a banker. The banker helped us organize ourselves, put things together. A lot of things that I just wouldn't know how to do, the banker did. Um, the banker went out to the market. By going out to the market, we ended up receiving we end up receiving a lot of it, like a lot of preliminary offers, I would say. I mean, mm -hmm. over 12 preliminary offers. Wow. And then, yeah, and then over 12. And then what happens is, uh, Matthew, you narrow it down. And so we narrowed it down to Behringer and then three others. One was, uh, I mean, we had, we had an offer, I can say it now, we had an offer to go to a SPAC. Like we could have spac our company, taken it public. So that was a real legit thing that looked at in the beginning and then opted not to. Um, there's a lot of um, cost per year with um, being public and just didn't think it was the right time. So then we narrowed it down to four companies. A couple of the companies you definitely, or at least one of the companies you definitely know, guaranteed. Um, but I can't say it because we signed like an NDA as much as I'd want to say it right now, but I Whatever. Who would we tell? Come on, who would we tell? So uh, I, it's just, I, it's just yeah. us kids here. Come on. Now. I know that's what I would think, but when I logged into your video streaming thing, it said you're recording. Um, oh yeah, yeah, that's oh, true. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. caught so, me. All right, I'm busted. There is the permanent oh, record yeah. here. Yes, right. And and, okay. and so Matt, once it was narrowed down to this final bidder, that process takes some time. I mean, yeah. it's the due diligence phase. I've never been through it like this. I mean, they literally do everything. I mean, they hire all tons of firms and tons of data due diligence on company company. And uh, so did you talk to people you went to high school with or something or, or what? Yeah, basically, yeah. I mean, they didn't go as far as maybe high school, but I mean, they, you know, survey thousands and thousands of people for real. And there's a real <laughs> legit companies that are doing this stuff. They're going through data, troves of data. I mean, I, and, and I mean, it's, it's a, you know the numbers in terms of valuation. They didn't purchase the entire company. So I can guess I go into a little more of the deal. They didn't purchase the entire company, but they purchased purchased the majority of the company. And so, you know, they put they put cash down now. 
And then there's some, you know, success things, but um, the investors in Benzinga, who some have been in for nine years, knock on wood, did fairly well or did very well. And many of the team members uh, got to participate as well. So I know Dan Gilbert was one of your early big players. So uh, Dan didn't get hurt on this deal, right? No, no. It, it, it was cool being able to give uh, Dan a, a check. I, I, uh, I, brought, I brought him his check. Uh, I brought him like one of those life side checks. So yeah, <laughs> I, you know, I feel like Dan's giving checks out a lot. You know, I feel like yeah, that's not, who he is. Yeah, and so it was cool. Um, you know, it was cool getting bringing him a check. Yeah. Now you don't have VCs or angels, and well, I I never asked you that question before because I thought you just sort of organically grew after Gilbert helped you get started. But am I wrong? No. Yeah, a little off. So I do believe, you know, sweat equity and just, you know, so I started by myself. I had $3,000 in a bank account. I built the first site for $1,450. Um, I was in my basement, tons of anxiety, waking up at three in the morning, with my an anxiousness, heart beating outside my body. I don't know if I like, no, I'm being Welcome serious. Welcome to the world of entrepreneurship. Yes, yeah, go ahead. yeah, great. Yep. <laughs> Whatever you guys imagine that anxiety is, it was that times 100. And so if I didn't get help or people to talk to, then, you know, I feel lucky to be here, to be honest, because I, you know, I had a three month old at home. I didn't know if I'd be able to pay the bills. And my wife's like, Jason, relax. If worse comes to worse, we'll move in with her parents. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, but to be honest, it calmed me down for a second. But then I'm like, wait, that's wait. not. Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, went to... I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like I went to, I went to like the undergrad B school at University of Michigan. And I was like, my friends were like Goldman and I'm here doing this startup thing and I'm making, you know, so I don't know. So the long story short about, I don't know how many months after it started, Mike, um, Light Bank, who had started by Brad Keywell and Eric Lukowski, they were the original investors. So they put in $1.5 million in the original um, round. They, in terms of investors, they like made a, a lot of money, a lot. Significant, significant. The the, uh, the the so they put the mil, million five in right when we started, like six months, seven months after we started, and they got a big check, like probably one of the bigger you know returns of, of their entire portfolio. And they were the guys who invested in like you know they're behind Groupon, they're behind a bunch of things, and this is probably one of their biggest returns. Wow, uh, I, I don't assume. Well, I yeah, I know this. You know, it's a private deal, private company but you're still a pretty hefty minority interest older, older, are you not? Yeah. I mean, just, yeah, I'm still um, definitely incentivized for growth. And so are team members, like other team members, not just me. Um, Crane's had an article in um, the paper today and there's Luke Jacoby was mentioned. There's other team members, but yeah, we're incentivized to grow it. Um, there was a few different options on the table. I mean, Matt asked how this deal came about we could have potentially sold to this other media company and we would have got the cash, but we wouldn't necessarily have been incentivized for growth. We wanted to uh, continue to build. We thought what we built, we did what we did fine, but we thought we could do some cooler stuff, um, build some great stuff. So we're incentivized to grow it for sure. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a different thing. I call it second inning or chapter two, because we really need to, bring in some, you know, new technology brains. We need to get some help in different areas in the event side. Um, but just like what you guys do and pivot and then start your podcast, your video streaming network, there's different things, different anxieties, different times, and we're incentivized to grow it. And um, we want to do a good job for the, the PE firm, uh, Behringer. Behringer also has done like, um, if you ever heard of Adweek, they bought that and made it into something pretty big. They own Inman Real Estate News. Um, they own a big affiliate website business. So they're in the digital space for a decent amount of time. They've been in it. I mean. And can you share some of the things you'd like to do? Or are you still developing that? Or do you feel that would like be given too much away or well, it, it's making things easier to use. It's, it's giving better data. When you're reading a piece of content on like Facebook stock and earnings preview, what's better data? How can you help an investor really figure out things in a more, in a simpler format. It's making your things available on mobile. 
It's letting you see all your stuff in one place. It's at the end of the day, there's a lot of distractions. And we believe if we can, you know, give information uh, that's easier to consume, the who, what, where, why, we think we can do a good job for investors. We're one of the biggest vendors of financial news to the North American brokerage space. So if you're using Robinhood to Ameritrade, you're seeing Benzinga. We're out here, out in Detroit, and we're broadcast nationwide. I mean, one of the big things, Mike, I would say is we're trying to get, we're trying to go global. So the UK, Asia, we have a little bit, we have people there, but not in the capacity that we need to have. So that's a big, um, a big push. When I started Benzinga, guys, I was getting up around 4.30 in the morning and going to bed at midnight. It was just me, myself, and I, and I had people helping me overseas, but now it's a different time zone thing. So we're trying to really expand our method of content to other countries to help people make better decisions in the stock market. Well, it sounds as though you could have, you know, just sold the company and walked away, but that's not what you wanted to do. It sounds like you still have a lot of plans for this company, which yeah. I think is, is interesting. Yeah. Well, Matt, I mean, the, the, when a buyer's buying, they, they want to see that you're, that you're still committed, I would say. Um, but yeah, there was some offers where we would go into it inside another media company and walk away and, um, They'll not necessarily walk away. They would they would want you to stay because you the know how. Um, but like I think life is short, and if you could build and solve problems for people and make information easier to consume in the investment space, I think I think you have like a responsibility to do it. Like I may have a better idea to sell clothes online, but um, I think you have a responsibility to use your knowledge and um, you know, what you built up to take it to the level that it needs to get to before saying like, Hey, that that's enough. All right. We've got about a minute left. Uh, of course, Matt and I know what Benzig is real well. This is your chance can, to do your shameless plug so you can recruit more people to your terminal. So go ahead fire away. Well, Matt and Mike are the best. Go to mitechnews.com for sure. First, that is my shameless plug. And go check it out on Facebook, MI Tech News. Mike and Matt have been doing it for so long. I used to listen to Matt on the radio and those brief things. I was like, I want to meet this Matt Roush. I want to meet him so bad. Like, I remember this like yesterday, same thing with Mike. But Benzinga, we have a thing called Benzinga Pro. We also have newsletters. You go to Benzinga, B-E-N-Z-I-N-G-A.com. You can sign up for some of our free newsletters. My email is jason at Benzinga.com. Let me know things you don't like about Benzinga, things we can improve. Things that you wish just existed in the investing world, maybe we'll build it for you. You can also find me on Twitter at Jason Raznick, R-A-Z-N-I-C-K. And what I want to say is for any aspiring entrepreneur and listen to this, the road isn't easy, as Mike and Matt alluded to. They, you know, you see the CNBC interview, the celebration, so behind that is excruciating anxiety, trying to build stuff. And you know, one thing to think about is. Um, this line that this too shall pass. So when things aren't going your way, this too shall pass, move on, make it do, build a new and experiment and see, and see what happens. But um, it, it was an exciting world one week that I haven't had in my entire life. Um, never mm -hmm. seen anything like it with the amount of messages, probably over a thousand. I'm still responding back to LinkedIn messages right now before this interview. So just thank you for everyone's out there. No, it's not easy. We appreciate your support and in Detroit, like this is where we started and uh, you guys have known us from way back and Mike, you've had me on the show many a time. So I appreciate you and Matt.